welcome in this lecture we will talk about respiration in plants now what is respiration energy is needed for various activities and this energy comes from where it comes from breakdown of glucose so the glucose breakdowns to provide energy and this energy is utilized by various organs of the body for various different functions now this energy which is utilized from the glucose by the process of breakdown is what is called as a process of respiration in simple terms i can say what is respiration is a biochemical decomposition of organic compounds organic compound like a simple organic compound here is glucose so biochemical decomposition of organic compounds like glucose leads to simple compounds and release of energy and this process is what is called as respiration now respiration is what kind of process it is a catabolic process catabolic implies it is destructive in nature in contrast to catabolic what is another process another process is anabolic anabolic is a constructive process in nature respiration is a classic example of a catabolic process as i mentioned it is destructive because there is breakdown of glucose simply when i say glucose breakdowns it is glucose plus oxygen giving you carbon dioxide plus water plus energy and this energy is utilized by the living organism in this case we are studying plants so it is utilized by plants for various what we understand one is respiration the other is burning what is the difference respiration occurs in living organism so therefore we call it as a cellular process or it occurs in living organism on the other hand i take a piece of paper i ignite it with a match stick this is a process of burning so it is non cellular process it does not involve living organisms burning is a single step process however respiration is a series of steps it occurs in cytoplasm that in, then it occurs in mitochondria it is part of the uh, aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration process that we would understand further the next is how the energy is released in burning energy is released spontaneously so as soon as you burn the paper with a match stick energy gets released however in case of respiration it is a step by step process and energy is released in steps now how does each step carry forward each step carry forwards by specific enzymes and these enzymes help in the process of respiration but since burning is a non cellular process there is no requirement for any enzyme to be involved energy which is released from respiration is stored how the energy released from respiration is stored in the atp then we have the atp adp conversion which is adenosine triphosphate to adenosine diphosphate and this conversion process takes place however in the case of burning there is direct release of heat and light so energy is released in the form of either heat or light here the energy is released as atp stored in the atp and respiration takes place at the normal body temperature so when i am taking this lecture the respiration is going simultaneously however burning takes place at a significantly higher temperature because you are bringing that thing which is in the atmosphere let's say i have the sheet of paper i want to burn it i cannot simply burn it like that why because i'll have to raise the temperature because in normal circumstances if it would have been burning i could not have kept it open like this it would have been stored in some other medium so that it does not burn but in the case that it is required to be burned we require a higher temperature so that's a basic difference between respiration and burning so six very important differences that we have discussed for respiration and burning extremely important to understand that respiration occurs in living organisms burning in non living organisms and therefore it does not occur in any steps it does not require any enzyme in contrast to that respiration occurs in steps and requires enzymes for the process to be convert completed and energy gets stored as 
Respiration takes place is an interesting process. So this respiration occurs in two steps. The first step is what is known as glycolysis. The second step is what is known as Krebs cycle. We would understand glycolysis and Krebs cycle in detail in separate lecture. But just to have an overview here, glycolysis is a process that occurs in the cytoplasm. And here glucose gets converted into pyruvate or pyruvic acid. Now this occurs in the cytoplasm in absence of oxygen. However, Krebs cycle is a process where pyruvic acid gets converted to carbon dioxide and water and in this process release of energy takes place in the form of ATP. This process occurs in mitochondria and since it occurs in mitochondria, it is a process which requires oxygen. In all, in the process of glycolysis, net two ATPs are produced. However, in the process of Krebs cycle, you have two ATP which are released directly from the Krebs cycle process and then there is an electron transport chain that releases 32 to 34 ATP again. Now, each breakdown is controlled by what? Each breakdown is controlled by enzymes. Now, when energy is liberated, it gets converted into chemical energy. Where is this chemical energy stored? This chemical energy is stored in ATP which is adenose triphosphate and part of it gets released as heat. So as you can see energy absorbed from the food combines with the phosphate and forms ATP adenine, adenine triphosphate and then the breakdown of ATP leads to ADP which is adenose diphosphate and this is where more energy is released from the cell. Now this ATP gets reconverted into ATP and therefore we call it as ATP ADP cycle. So one molecule of glucose when it completely oxidizes it gives 38 molecules of ATP two in the process of glycolysis and the remaining 36 here where 34 comes from the electron transport chain and 2 comes from directly the process of Krebs cycle. Now ATP is called as the energy currency of the cell. ATP is called what? ATP is called as the energy currency of the cell. Each cell produces its own ATP by the process of respiration and ATP is not transported from cell to cell. Very important to note, each cell produces its own ATP. ATP does not transport from one cell to another. Extremely important concept which even in higher grades the students are not able to answer. ATP is produced for each cell independently. It is not transported from one cell to another. Now how does respiration occurs in plant? Three ways through which respiration occurs. One is the oxygen which enters the stomata of the leaf. The second is exchange of gases that occurs through lenticels. Lenticels occurs in old stem, woody stems and here the general um, surface of the root is the another aspect or through the roots we can say is the another way through which respiration takes place. Respiration is a process that occurs day in and day out. So it occurs day and night. Photosynthesis occurs only in the day, requires chlorophyll. However, respiration is a process that occurs day and night. During the day, what happens is photosynthesis is in progress. So oxygen is produced and this oxygen is utilized for the process of respiration. However, at night what happens is only oxygen, oxygen gets utilized for the process of respiration and in this process carbon dioxide is released and therefore it is advisable not to sleep under the trees during night time because there is accumulation of carbon dioxide under, under the trees. During the daytime, this carbon dioxide which is released is again utilized by the plant for the purpose of photosynthesis. So night time is a time where no photosynthesis occurs and that's the reason that the respiration released uh, carbon dioxide is not reutilized by the plants again. The next is roots. How roots help in respiration? Roots absorb oxygen from the soil particle. This diffuses into the soil hairs and other parts of the 
रूट सो ऑक्सीजन डिफ्यूजेस इन टू द सेल बाय वॉट ऑक्सीजन डिफ्यूजेस इन टू द सेल बाय द प्रोसेस बाय द स्टोमेटा एंड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड डिफ्यूजेस फ्रॉम द सेल थ्रू द स्टोमेटा टू द एक्सटीरियर राइट सो ऑक्सीजन डिफ्यूजेस इन थ्रू द स्टोमेटा कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड डिफ्यूजेस आउट थ्रू द स्टोमेटा अगेन एंड वन इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट दैट यू मस्ट बी फेमिलियर विद वेन वी टॉक अबाउट रेस्पिरेशन इज न्यूमेटोफोर्स एंड न्यूमेटोफोर्स आर वॉट न्यूमेटोफोर्स अकर इन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द मैंग्रूव्स और द सेलाइन सॉइल प्लांट्स एंड दीज आर कॉल्ड एज रेस्पिरेटरी रूट्स सो राधर दैन रूट्स गोइंग डाउन दीज रूट्स स्टार्ट टू कम अप नाउ एज दे एमर्ज आउट ऑफ द वॉटर लॉगिंग सॉइल these roots bear lenticels and they are able to exchange the gases and as a result respiration in uh, mangrove plants occurs through nematophores very very important concept so two important concepts that we have discussed as of now one is atp produces uh, atp is generated for each cell by its own it is not transported from one cell to another the second important concept is nematophores and mangroves is you, uh, is the process through which respiration occurs in mangroves and these uh, this occurs through lenticels where the exchange of gases takes place as the roots come out of the water logged soil important processes one is aerobic respiration the other is anaerobic respiration as the name suggests aerobic wherever it comes it requires oxygen anaerobic is a process that does not require oxygen as we understood in our previous classes what happened in anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration is due to incomplete breakdown of glucose and glucose breakdowns into pyruvic acid this process occurs only in the cytoplasm so it occurs in cytoplasm and this process is called as glycolysis however for a aerobic respiration to occur it requires both gly glycolysis and krebs cycle Cre glycolysis is the process of anaerobic respiration in the absence of oxygen but krebs cycle occurs in mitochondria it requires oxygen so aerobic respiration requires both the cytoplasm where the anaerobic respiration takes place and then the mitochondria where the aerobic uh, the, the cytoplasm where the anaerobic respiration takes place and mitochondria where the aerobic respiration takes place together it forms the complete process of respiration now energy released in the anaerobic respiration is simply 2 atp very much less than that released in the aerobic respiration which is 38 atp per molecule of glucose the end product in the case of aerobic acid is water and carbon dioxide and release of energy is stored in the form of atp however in anaerobic respiration it is incomplete breakdown of glucose so that's the formation of pyruvic acid now in the case of plants it forms what it forms ethyl alcohol in the form in the case of animals it forms lactic acid lactic acid gets stored in the muscle in the case of plants ethyl alcohol is the product which is formed some plants fruits seeds can also uh, till a time respire in absence of oxygen but what would happen if it is done continuously if it is done continuously then accumulation of alcohol would take place and this alcohol becomes toxic to the plant as a result the plant would ultimately collapse or die so that is again important to note that aerobic respiration is required for fruits for plants if there is anaerobic respiration that occurs continuously there would be accumulation of toxic substances which would be the cause of the death of the plant but in case of bacteria in case of fungi anaerobic respiration takes now if there is a lime water this lime water would turn milky why because carbon dioxide is released and this indicates that green plants produce carbon dioxide in the process of respiration so that's one important experiment the second is when the lime water turns milky it also indicates that the seeds are germinating that means they are producing carbon dioxide during the process of respiration if the seed is boiled it won't produce or it won't turn the lime water milky germinating seeds which are there also release heat 
during the process of respiration however if a seed is boiled there would be no heat that is released again important to note the heat that is released in the process of respiration in plants is relatively less than that released in the case of animals now let's take two flasks in one i put germinating seeds and in another i put dead seeds what would happen in the case of germinating seed in the case of germinating seed the water level would start to rise and this water level increase indicates what that carbon dioxide and water is released and that is because of the process of respiration however no release would take place where dead seeds are there because there is no process of respiration that actually occurs also in the case of germinating seeds there would be increase in the level of carbon dioxide in the flask however when the seeds are dead or there are boiled seeds which are kept there would be no increase in the level of carbon dioxide another interesting fact is if i introduced potassium hydroxide that is koh in the germinating seeds uh, then the level would uh, le the level of mercury would rise again because this uh potassium hydroxide reacts with carbon dioxide and this would lead to formation of potassium carbonate and water so water level would again increase indicating that that koh would indicate that there is presence of water in the process of respiration and that is shown by increase in the water levels because of the seeds which are germinating however that won't take place if there are dead or boiled seeds in another flask so those are some of the experiments to indicate that germinating seeds do respire and when respiration takes place release of carbon dioxide and water takes place indicating lime water turning milky increase in the water level so those are some of the quick applicative aspects experimental aspects that we need to understand in the process of respiration of plants